What's going on everybody, it's Lazarus here, back with another MLB The Show 19 video, and today, we're going to be doing a fun one. In this video, we're going to be going over who I think will be the highest rated player on every team, overall wise. Now I did this a while back in 2017, and it was really fun to make, so we're going to do it again. Since there's going to be so many players in this, it's going to have to be a bit of a rapid fire thing, because we don't want this to be 30 minutes long, but it'll still be a fun video nonetheless. All right, 32 teams, 32 players. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. The first team we're gonna be looking at is the Arizona Diamondbacks, and they kinda took a huge step down from last season. Their roster has gotten noticeably worse, and their best player right now is Zach Greinke. Despite his old age and his absurd contract, he's still one of the better pitchers in all of baseball. In 2018, he had an ERA of 3.21, which is pretty good, and he should be the Diamondbacks' highest overall player. Moving on to the Atlanta Braves, we have Freddie Freeman, a very good veteran player on a younger team, and he's one of the best first basemen in all of baseball, and he has the stats to back it up. With a 388 on base percentage, 23 homers, an 892 OPS, 140 OPS plus, and a 6.1 war, Freddie Freeman is an absolute tank. Now, looking at the Baltimore Orioles one, this is probably one of the more interesting teams in the league, purely because of just how bad they were in 2018. The roster is terrible. So for their best player, we're going to pick Michael Givens, who didn't have a good year last year, really at all. The only other players that would be close are maybe Trey Mancini, or Jonathan VR, but at this point, this team is basically like a quadruple-A organization, so there's not a lot of options to choose from. So, Michael Givens, you're the winner. Congratulations. Moving on to a slightly better team, we have the Boston Red Sox, reigning world champions, and their best player is going to be Mookie Betts. He's the reigning AL MVP, and he had an absolutely historic season last year. A 346 batting average, 32 homers, a 438 on base. He's one of the best players in all of baseball. Probably number two behind Mike Trout. So it's a no-brainer that he's going to be the best player on the Boston Red Sox. Moving on to the Chicago Cubs. Their best player is going to have to be Javier Baez, who had a pretty good season in 2018, finishing second in NL MVP voting. Now an argument could be made for Chris Bryant, but he has been dealing with some injuries and inconsistencies, so Baez is probably the safe bet here. Now for the other Chicago team, it's going to have to be Jose Abreu. The White Sox aren't quite as good as the Cubs are, but they do have a lot of good young prospects coming up soon. But for now, Jose Abreu is going to be their top dog. He had a decent year in 2018, and as of right now, he's the best they got. Now on to the Cincinnati Reds. Who else could it be but Joey Votto? They did get better in the offseason, adding guys like Yasiel Puig and Alex Wood, but Joey Votto is still their best player. He had a nice line of 284, 417, and 419 last year, along with a war of 3.5. 2018 wasn't his best season, but it was still pretty good, and he's still their best player. We're going to say that Jose Ramirez is just going to beat out Francisco Lindor to be the Indians' top player. Ramirez had a really great year in 2018, finishing top three in the AL MVP voting. He broke out as one of the best players in baseball. So, as of now, he's their best player, but we'll have to wait and see if he continues this kind of crazy production. For Colorado, it's pretty obvious who their best player is going to be, and that is Nolan Arenado, who recently just signed a pretty crazy extension, but it was well-deserved. In 2018, he finished top three in MVP voting, led the National League in dingers with 38, and had a 374 on base percentage and a 935 OPS. Cores or not, he's an absolute beast, and is without a doubt the best player in the Colorado Rockies. The Tigers are yet another team that are not looking too good next year, and it seems like at this point they fully embrace the tank, so their best player is going to have to be old man Miguel Cabrera. Despite the fact that he's been injured these last few years, he still has the talent and ability to be better than anybody else. When he did play last year, he was actually pretty decent. Michael Fulmer is close, 
but you can't go wrong with the talent of Miguel Cabrera as he is a future Hall of Famer. Now for the stacked Houston Astros, it's got to be Jose Altuve, one of the best players in baseball. And although 2018 wasn't exactly his best season, he was still very good. Across the board, all his stats were still solid, but just the power numbers were a bit low. He's the best player on the roster, despite the fact how stacked it is, and I don't expect that to change very soon. Now on to another team that's not exactly in the best shape. We have the Kansas City Royals, and their best player is going to be Salvador Perez. The bad news is, he's out for the season with Tommy John surgery. So he won't stay their best player for very long, and if I have to bet on it, Whit Merrifield will be taking that over pretty soon. Because as I mentioned in my sleeper video, he's pretty good. But yeah, other than these two guys, the Royals roster is kind of a mess, so hopefully they get that sorted out sooner than later. For the Los Angeles Angels, it's obviously Albert Pujols, one of the best players to ever live. <laughs> of course not, it's Mike Trout. If it was anyone other than Mike Trout, I think there'd be a serious problem. There's really not much you have to say about Trout. He's the best player in baseball, probably the best player since Barry Bonds. It's pretty much automatic that he's going to be the best player on the Angels every single year. For the real Los Angeles team, we have Clayton Kershaw. And this one, while not as obvious as the Angels, is still kind of obvious. Although he's been dealing with injuries the past few seasons, when he's healthy, he's still one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. And it is really hard to discount what Clayton's done in the last decade, so I think it's fair to call him the best overall player on the Dodgers. Moving on to the Miami Marlins, this is going to be kind of an interesting one. To be completely honest with you guys, I have never heard of Brian Anderson before I googled their roster. And last year, he was second on the team in war, only behind JT Realmuto. So you know what? I think he's going to be their highest rated player. The rest of the roster is garbage, but Brian Anderson had a pretty decent year. Maybe Sergio Romo or Starlin Castro could be close behind, but to be honest, those guys aren't exactly great either. For the Milwaukee Brewers, it's an absolute no-brainer. Christian Yelich, last year's National League MVP, and also famous for how apeshit he went in the second half of the season. He finished the year with a line of 326, 402, and 598, along with 36 home runs and 164 OPS+. He turned into an absolute stud, and it doesn't look like he's going to be slowing down anytime soon. The Minnesota Twins are one of those teams that sneakily got better last year in the offseason. One of the players they picked up was Nelson Cruz, who, despite being 37 years old, can still swing it. Last year, he hit 37 bombs with a 342 on base percentage, and he's going to be a good veteran on a very young team. On to the New York Mets, it's star pitcher Jacob deGrom, who solidified himself as one of the best pitchers in all of baseball last year winning the National League Cy Young. He had a historically low 1.70 ERA in 217 innings pitched, along with a 216 ERA+. Plus. He was an absolute tank last season, and of course, he's going to be the highest player on the Mets. For the New York Yankees, there's a lot of competition, because to be honest, that roster is absolutely stacked, but Aaron Judge is consistently the best player on the team. Before his wrist injury in 2018, he had a line of 278, 392, and 528, along with 27 homers and a 145 OPS+. Plus. So a good sophomore season following up his historic rookie season, and with that, he should be rewarded by being the best player on the team. Matt Chapman sneakily became one of the best players in all of baseball in 2018. He was a good hitter and one of the best fielders in the entire league. With a line of 278, 356 and 508 along with 24 home runs he could certainly swing it and on the defensive side of things he had a 3.5 d war so in my opinion he'll just beat out blake trinan for being the best player on the oakland a's even though the philadelphia phillies just picked up bryce harper in free agency that was a move more geared towards his star power rather than his actual baseball skills which is why I think Aaron Nola is going to be the best player overall wise on the Phillies. He had a great year in 2018 with a 2.37 ERA and 212 innings pitched, along with 224 strikeouts, 
a war of 10, and a 175 ERA+. Plus. He is a legitimate pitcher, and he's going to be dominant for years to come. The Pittsburgh Pirates team is one that's fallen apart pretty quickly from all those playoff teams earlier in the decade. Most of the good players from those teams either aren't as good now, or they're on different teams. So the best one they have right now is probably going to be Starling Marte. And he's, he's alright. He's not terrible. He had a line of 277, 327, and 460, along with 3.7 war in 2018. So he's a nice, solid player, but they definitely have some work to do on that roster. With their somewhat surprising signing of Manny Machado, the Padres definitely bolstered their roster as he easily becomes their best player. You know, despite all the controversy surrounding Machado last season, he had a very, very good year. With a line of 297, 367, and 538, along with 37 home runs and a 146 OPS+, plus, he was one of the better players in all of baseball. The San Francisco Giants are another team that's kind of fallen off in the past few years, but they still have a couple key components from those World Series titles, one of them being Buster Posey, who I believe will be their best player. Now, it's close between him and Mad Bum, but it's hard to go wrong with Buster Posey. The Seattle Mariners had a pretty interesting offseason, trading everyone and their mother from the team, and that leaves them with a lot of question marks. But one player that isn't a question mark is Mitch Hanniger, and this guy is absolutely nasty. In 2018, he had a great year. He was one of the better players in the league last year and still didn't get a lot of attention. If he continues doing this into the next season, it might be time to start paying attention to Mitch Hanniger. The St. Louis Cardinals are going to be highlighted by their big pickup in the offseason, Paul Goldschmidt. And although he had that slow start to the year in 2018, he absolutely killed it afterwards. He finished the year with a line of 290, 389, and 533, with 33 home runs and 139 OPS plus, and a 5.4 war. This guy is still one of the best pure hitters in all of baseball, and now, on a big team like the Cardinals, he's going to show it more than ever. The Tampa Bay Rays put together a sneaky good team last year, led by Blake Snell, their Cy Young Award winner. He had an absolutely fantastic season in 2018 with a 1.89 ERA and 180 innings pitched, 221 strikeouts, and a 2.19 ERA+. I'd say this is more than enough to make him the best player in the race. The Texas Rangers are yet another team that's not looking too good for the 2019 season. Adrian Beltre, their best player, has retired. So now their best player is going to be, and I know I'm going to butcher this name already, Jose Leclerc, a good relief pitcher who just signed a pretty nice extension, and he was pretty nasty in 2018. So their roster is not too good, but this kid is the real deal. For the Toronto Blue Jays, it's going to be Kevin Pillar, who at this point feels like he's been on the team forever. And while he's not the best hitter, he's not terrible, but he's better known for his good fielding abilities. And on a subpar Blue Jays roster, He's one of the best players they have, if not the best. And finally, we're on our last team, the Washington Nationals, and it's going to be none other than Mad Max Scherzer. Even if Harper was still on the team, Max would still be number one, as he's transitioned into one of the best pitchers in the entire league. He's been consistently good and consistently nasty in the last few years. I think it's safe to say that he's overcome Kershaw for the best pitcher in baseball, and it's exciting to see where his career goes from here. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to be posting a ton of MLB The Show 19 videos as the game slowly starts to roll out, but let me know in the comment section below, who do you think is the best player on each team? I'm excited to see what you guys have to say, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.